In this, uh, we are looking at the second part of this uh, chapter five, mathematical description of vector control. And uh, so uh, we have already seen how to uh, make this happen using current regulated uh, PWM converter. So let me uh, jump over to those slides here. Uh, so here's the block diagram where, uh, you know, using outer loops like uh, speed, uh, position loop, uh, speed loop, and torque loop, uh, and also the, uh, the, the flux loop here. Uh, we determine what the reference values are for ISD and ISQ. So uh, then we get uh, to this transformation, these three currents, and then we use this current regulated uh, you know, PPU power processing unit to give us those currents uh, by using some hysteretic uh, control. And uh, so that uh, makes it very easy, but uh, unfortunately it results in switching frequencies uh, which are not constant, and sometimes they are deemed not to be desirable. So we should look at uh, another scheme, and uh, so we will, you know, I'll skip over these slides that we uh, saw in the previous part. So here, uh, what we'll say is that, look, uh, we need to, uh, you know, supply those currents, ISD star and ISQ star, right, to the machine. Uh, under this vector control operation. But, uh, you know, it is possible to supply these currents, uh, you know, by appropriately applying the voltages, because when you apply voltages, uh, currents result. So that's uh, our attempt. So, uh, you know, we have these two equations uh, for VSD and VSQ, but uh, we like to, you know, uh, make it such that they, they you know, we can uh, ultimately come up with this VSD and VSQ values with uh, what we have. So this is where uh, we are going. So let's define this unitless quantity here. And uh, it's very close to one. Uh, you know, you can appreciate if the leakage is for zero, then of course it will be exactly one, but uh, it's not exactly one. Then we have the flux linkage for lambda RD, and we have flux linkage for uh, expression for lambda SD here. So uh, using uh, uh, these equations, and I, I don't need to go into the detail, but uh, using uh, these equations, uh, we can, and using this term over here, we can express lambda SD in this manner, and using uh, the expression for lambda SQ, which is right here, and recognizing that uh, lambda SQ is uh, uh, zero, uh, which results in this equation here, under vector control condition, this is zero, and therefore lambda S, I'm sorry, it's in this case, I'm sorry, lambda RD is zero, so I was wrong, I was wrong. So this is not zero. What is zero is lambda RD, when DX is uh, RQ, I should say again, another mistake. Lambda RQ is zero. Uh, so lambda SQ is not zero, okay? So, uh, but using lambda RQ equal to zero, we come up with this equation here. Uh, you know, IRQ as a function of ISQ, and if you substitute for IRQ over here, uh, we come up with lambda SQ here. So uh, again, using these uh, into these two equations, uh, we come up with uh, these equations over here, where terms have been collected such that, uh, you know, this uh, VSD prime it only contains quantities corresponding to D channel here. So VSD in terms of ISD and D, DT of ISD. And uh, <clears throat> the other things, uh, uh, of course, uh, you, you still have lambda RD, but uh, you know that is not changing very fast, maybe not changing at all. So this DDT term is uh, very small. And then we have uh, ISQ coming from the other channel. So we will lump them as uh, uh, and call them VSD compensation, okay? And similarly, similarly, we do this for VSQ, where we have VSQ prime plus these quantities here. For example, lambda RD is from the D channel, and then ISD is from the D channel. So they are uh, separated out, and we call them VSQ comp. So the, these terms can be feed, uh, we can do feed forward of these terms, and uh, just use uh, this part of the, the of equations 
to design our controller. So that's what we'll do in the next slide here. So I have just repeated those equations and uh, and you can see that we have VST prime here and VSQ prime here and these compensation terms are listed out just uh, the same equations that we have here. So now we are ready to design uh, our system. So as I said earlier, the bottom line is that we need ISD and IS cube prime. And uh, so we have those coming as references from uh, position loop, speed loop, and torque loop. And then we have actual ISD, not actual, I should say, uh, ISD and IS cube uh, that uh, our machine has. And we compare them <coughs> Well, with the reference values and the error acts on this uh, PI controller uh, that we will design, and it gives us VST prime and a VSQ prime here. Okay, and then uh, you know these terms we can feed forward VSD compensation and VSQ compensation, and there's an example where it shows that it really doesn't make all that much of a difference, but uh, certainly you can do that, and uh, then we get this VST reference and VSQ reference here. And then, oh, I'm sorry, well, I'm not sure why it's uh, uh, going to there. Okay, so <clears throat> now, uh, uh, you know, we still have the same uh, mo motor model over here. Uh, and we can talk about the inputs to this, but the output is the torque, uh, estimated electromagnetic torque, lambda RD, and theta DA. And knowing theta, theta DA and uh, knowing the reference voltages that we want, we can do the transformation and we can come up with A, B, and C phase voltages uh, desired. So that's the asterisk on top of them. And then we can use space vector PWM, or which we'll cover in one of the later chapters, or it could be sine PWM that uh, you, know, you see in uh, you know, basic uh, power electronics scores and uh, produce these voltages, VA, VB, and VC, which results in IA, IB, and IC going into this motor, uh, which we sense, and then we apply the transformation through theta DA, which gives, gives us ISD and ISQ, and that motor model that we have seen earlier gives us uh, these outputs over here. And he, here, you know, it's, uh, we have, again, an encoder, and, uh, uh, you know, we end up with this, uh, measured mechanical speed, which is used in uh, uh, speed control loop over here. So that's a basic uh, block diagram. And uh, so we, we still have to design the controller. So the transfer functions we have are given here by these equations and uh, uh, the equations, I should say, and this uh, uh, to generate uh, VSD uh, prime, for example, here, uh, knowing the ISD reference, and the ISD that's coming out here in this plant, uh, we can uh, use the error to design this PI controller, which gives us VSD prime, and then the plant that we have is given by this part of this equation here. Okay, and the same thing for the Q channel. So here we can again design PI controller, the KP and KI, and KI I should say, uh, using uh, the, the usual method of uh, uh, selecting a bandwidth, uh, which gives us the <clears throat> open loop, uh, uh, you know, frequency, uh, uh, crossover frequency, and also, you know, again using phase margin, for example, of 60 degrees. Okay, so using uh, that technique, we can design the, the, we can calculate the gains for the proportional and the integral controller here, and exactly the same thing for the Q channel here. So now we are ready to take it to, to Simulink. And uh, so here, uh, you know, you can see all these blocks. The main thing to notice here, that here we assume this uh, uh, space vector, uh, whether it's space vector or whether it's sine PWM, uh, this uh, uh, power converter to be ideal. And therefore we just represent it by a gain of one. But certainly it can be done in more detail if uh, one needs to. But here we're just trying to show how uh, vector control works. And once we have all these blocks in place, and here are the results we have. So once again, the electromagnetic torque is plotted over here for a step change in load here. So let's say at this time, the load, uh, load torque, 
certainly drops to this level here. So you can see that uh, you know electromagnetic torque has some oscillation, but it very quickly uh, gives us the, the you know the the load torque uh, in the next uh, steady state. And similarly, the speed here, if that's our objective here, is to keep speed constant, so it, it goes through some gyration, but uh, comes back to the original speed over here. So this uh, concludes our discussion of uh, of a vector control, which uh, you know was based on the equations uh, for this machine in DQ axis that we derived in uh, chapter three, and then uh, you know qualitatively on a physical basis uh, we saw how this vector control works in chapter four, and in this chapter we have written the necessary equations in our to be able to solve them using simulate. So thank you. So do you want to keep annotations discard?